Hallelujah. I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I welcome you to today's Open Heavens Reflection. From the daily devotional written by the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor E. A. Adibre. My name is Tony Dada, a pastor in the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Kingdom Builders family based in Luton. And today we are looking at the topic, what are you living for? What are you living for? And our text is from the book of Luke, chapter 12, from verse 15 through to verse 20. And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully, and he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my bands and build greater, and there I will bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, So thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thy ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? Um, memory verses from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 13. And it says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Dear friends, the Bible tells us in the book of Psalms 100, verse 3, that we are the sheep of God's pastures. In other words, we actually belong to him and he has the, the right of ownership over us. He's the sole reason of our existence that we were created to worship him and give him pleasure. The unfortunate story from the Bible passage of today, as we read, you know, is about a certain rich man who was boasting about his possessions. He obviously had an undue fondness for the sudden blessing that God generously sent his way. In fact, he totally forgot that we are all sojourners and pilgrims on a journey that only God knows when it will end. And it is about time that we beloved believers take our rightful place, totally committed to God. And from the word of Paul and the apostle of Jesus Christ, as declared in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, he said that he is crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, he continues to live, but only through Christ, who is the divine force behind his life. Dear brothers and sisters, what is it in your life? What in your life can you describe as being ultimate? Is it your material possession? Is it your wealth? your career or position? Is it a title you are carrying around? As God's beloved children, we must arise from our slumber and declare a new relationship with Him. Our confession as believers should be in the word from Apostle Paul in the book of Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. He says that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His sufferings being made conformable unto His death. And so our focus should be heaven bound at all times. You know why? For we do not know when he will come like a thief in the night. And once we confess Jesus as our Lord and Savior, then all things must pass away and the newness in God must take over. Our focus will then be to further the kingdom of God until he returns or we are called home to our maker, whichever comes first. John chapter 14 verse 6 clearly states that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And that tells us that our source is there for Jesus Christ. And once we are totally committed to him, we'll be living for God and not for ourselves. Brethren, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness in your life. And when you do so, you will see that you will no longer doubt, you will no longer have any, any, anything to, you know, to, 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 to doubt about God 
Why? Because he is the faithful one. And you must realize the reason why you are still alive today. He has a reason for keeping you alive. And I want you to know the life that you are living is not of yours. I pray that the Lord bless you as we have reflected on that word in the name of Jesus. Pray this prayer with me. My Father, help me to live for you and for you alone. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I look forward to seeing you again. Until then, 